The F-105 Thunder Chief was a single-seat, all-weather fighter-bomber built by Republic Aviation and known, sometimes affectionately, as the Thud. It was the largest single-seat, single-engine fighter aircraft ever flown and served from 1958 to 1984. I remember as a child in the late 70s or early 80s seeing a thud and a static display along the flight line at an air show, and it was just overwhelming how big this aircraft was. It was designed for high-speed, low-altitude penetration, and the F-105 was able to fly very fast, very low. It was capable of Mach 2 at altitude and even Mach 1 down at sea level. Interestingly for a fighter, it had a bomb bay. That was because it was designed to deliver a nuclear weapon. There was a big obsession in the early 50s with this idea that every war would be a nuclear war. This obsession would, however, put the thud at a big disadvantage when it found itself in a very non-nuclear war in Vietnam. It was armed with a 20mm M61 Vulcan, The bomb bay could hold up to 8,000 pounds of ordnance, and it had five external pylons for another 6,000 pounds. It could carry more bombs than the World War II bombers like the B-17 and B-24, and eventually it would be capable of carrying Sidewinder missiles as well. It was the only American aircraft removed from combat due to high loss rates, though. They were replaced in the Air Force inventory by the F-4 Phantom and the F-111. There were 833 of the aircraft built, most of them the D model. 395 were lost in Vietnam. Out of that number, 334 were to enemy action and 62 to non-combat losses. And most of those losses were to ground fire. In the air, they were able to achieve some victories against MiGs. They had 27.5 kills compared to only 17 air-to-air -air losses. One F-105 was even credited, unofficially, with shooting down three MiGs, one with a missile, one with a gun, and one by dropping bombs in its path. Work on designing the aircraft began in 1951. It's amazing how early these jets were being created. The Thud was being designed while Corsairs were still in combat over Korea. The mock-up was made in 1953, and the jet was actually ordered in 1954. The F-105 took its first flight in 1955 and went Mach 1.2 on that maiden flight. That wasn't as fast as she was designed to go, so there were some modifications made to that initial design, and that resulted in the F-105B. The B had an area-ruled fuselage design, which narrows the waist of the plane, so to speak. Sometimes it's called a wasp waist, or a Coke bottle shape and that resulted in an even faster aircraft. The first production model was accepted in 1957. They soon further improved it and developed the F-105D, which had its first flight in 1959, and most of the F-105s would be made to that D standard. You may have noticed some of the unusual features of this aircraft besides just being a huge plane. One is the wing root intake for the engines. You notice that unusual forward angle? That angle helps the plane when it turns and climbs and descends to allow air to flow into the intake without being blocked by a part of the plane. Inside of that wing root intake, there's a splitter plate to remove rough air and allow the air to flow into the engine at subsonic speed no matter how fast the plane is going. The wings of the F-105 are also specially designed. They're relatively small, making them highly loaded, which means there's a lot of plane for the square feet of the wing to lift. This means it will have a smoother flight and very low drag, but it's also going to have a long takeoff and long landing run. Besides the more common one-seat version, there's also the two-seat version used primarily for the Wild Weasel mission. Wild Weasel aircraft, what a great name, are used for SEED, S-E-A-D, or Suppression of Enemy Air Defenses. In other words, knocking out enemy air defenses so other planes wouldn't be shot down. The Wild Weasel mission was primarily against the SA-2 guideline missile that the Vietnamese got from the Soviets. As a Mach 3 missile, 
with a 430-pound fragmentation warhead. Here you can see an SA-2 missile on display at the Museum of the Air Force. Two Wild Weasel pilots were awarded the Medal of Honor during the war in Vietnam. The Wild Weasels would be the first in and the last out during an air raid. It was a very dangerous job, and they were the last of the F-105s that were withdrawn from service, and that wasn't until 1984. In the Wild Weasel role, the weapon would typically be the AGM-45 Shrike anti-radiation missile, which is basically a Sparrow air-to-air -air missile, but with a different seeker. An anti-radiation missile is a missile that homes in on the radio waves from a radar. The Shrike wasn't a particularly big missile, and also it lost track when they shut the radar down that it was homing in on. So there was a common tactic, they're firing Shrikes, turn the radar off. Here is a Shrike anti-radiation missile. Eventually, the Shrike would be supplemented with the standard anti-radiation missile, or standard ARM, which used a larger Navy surface-to-air missile, the standard missile, which is still in use in newer versions today. It had a larger warhead and eventually was upgraded so that if they shut off the radar, the missile would actually remember where the radar was and hit that spot. And here is the standard ARM, a larger, much more capable missile. Now for that nickname. Why call it the Thud instead of its given name, Thunder Chief? Well, it's one of those typically military things where there's that love-hate relationship and a healthy dose of dark humor. There are multiple explanations that you'll hear, but most people say the name comes from the sound this huge, monstrous aircraft would make when it hits the ground. There'd be a big thud, so the thud. Now people can try to clean that up, but that's just the sort of thing that military folks do. Continuing in that vein, pilots would say it's a triple threat. It could bomb you, it could strafe you, or it could fall on you. Another silly thing pilots said about it is that Republic was going to make the F-105 out of cement, but learned that steel was heavier, so they used that instead. There were very high losses of the F-105. At first, it was due to a lack of reliability, and that brought on some of the negative views of the aircraft. But most of the losses came from doing a very dangerous combat job. The Thud first saw combat on the 14th of August, 1964, over North Vietnam, and that mission also included the first loss in combat of an F-105. She did the majority of strike bombing missions in the early years of the Vietnam War with over 20,000 sorties. It's an aircraft that a lot of people don't know a lot about but it performed an incredibly hard job at a time when there just wasn't anything else to do that job. The pilots paid a price for that and suffered severe losses. Even with all her losses, she was still loved by those that knew her best. Thanks so much for watching. You know the drill. Please like, subscribe, and take a moment to watch another video. Thanks, and see you next time.